So let's crank through. We've got four problems. And these would be excellent, excellent test problems to really make sure you understand things. So if you can do these, you can do anything. What if you have one over a plus one? Not bad so far. Plus one over a minus one. All right. But that whole thing is in the numerator. The denominator is one over a plus one. Minus one over a minus one. Now, again, a lot of students will look at this and say, well, I'll just cancel the one over a plus one with this and I'll cancel this with this and I'm done. But you should know by now you can't do that. You cannot cancel things on the top and bottom unless you have factored forms, everything multiplied and so on. This plus and minus totally prevent you from doing that because it links this as a term. This is a term and these two terms are different so you can't cancel. Them. But what I do have is a fraction in the top, two fractions. I want to try to add them together. So I need a common denominator. So I'm going to write the first fraction as 1 over, um, let's write it as a plus 1, right, plus 1 over, this is going to be a minus 1. I'm basically setting it up so I can find a common denominator. How can I do that? Well, what I'll do is I'll say, um, probably the easiest way to do is instead of drawing these large, long fraction bars, let's do it like this. I'm going to multiply this first fraction by something. I don't see anything obvious, so I'm just going to take what's on the other denominator and I'll multiply it by a minus 1 over a minus 1. And if it helps you visualize, you can put little parentheses around these terms. So if I multiply this, the common denominator will be the large term a plus 1 times a minus 1. Okay, now to make it match over here, I got to multiply by a plus 1, which is what this is, uh, over a plus 1. You see what's going on? All I've done is multiply this fraction by 1. This, this whole thing just make is one. This whole thing divided is just one as well, so I haven't changed anything, but now the common denominators match. When I multiply this and I multiply this, they have the same bottom terms. So we'll leave that alone, and we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. On the bottom, we have to do the exact same thing down here. In fact, it's gonna look exactly the same. A plus one, and then I have a now a minus sign, one over a minus one. So then I'll change colors, and it's literally gonna be the same thing. It's going to be a minus 1 over a minus 1 multiplied by a plus 1, a plus 1. You might say, wow, that's a lot of work just to do this little thing, but this is why I'm telling you these are the hard problems, right? But now I have a common denominator here which will match this after I do the multiplication. So what we can do now is go ahead and, and tidy things up just a little bit to make sure you understand. So this whole thing multiplied together over here is going to give you in the top a minus 1, right? On the bottom, you'll have the product of these two things. I'm going to wrap this in parentheses as well, a plus 1, a minus 1. And then I'm going to have to add to that over here. 1 times this will mean the numerator will be a plus 1. The denominator will be exactly the same. That was the whole point, a plus 1, a minus 1. So now you see I have a common denominator. I can add those. But unfortunately, I still have this bottom thing. So it'll be the similar sort of thing. You'll have the a minus 1. In fact, it's going to be exactly the same. a plus 1, a minus 1. The only difference is this plus becomes a minus. a plus 1 over a plus 1, a minus 1. Why don't I rewrite it like that? Just so that you can clearly see common denominator here, common denominator here. So then in the next step, what can I do? It's going to be this term plus this term, right? So it'll be this term plus this term, which will be, since it's a plus sign, it doesn't matter so much with parentheses like I was telling you before. So just do it like this. A minus 1 plus this term, A plus 1. The denominator here just remains the same, which is A plus 1, A minus 1. All you did was add those numerators together, and you keep it over the exact same common denominator. In the denominator here, you have to be a little more careful. In fact, because of this, I'm just going to make it 100% clear what you have here. Just go ahead and wrap it in parentheses if you want to make it easy. The parentheses don't matter in that case. But here they do. A minus 1 minus this. You've got to be careful. You, I told you this in the last lesson for another problem. You're subtracting the whole term. So the best way to write it is A minus 1 minus the entire term, A plus 1. Because in the next step, I'm going to have to distribute this minus sign in. So if you don't write the parentheses here, you're going to get the wrong answer. Bottom stays the same. A plus 1, A minus 1. Okay? So now I'm going to switch colors. We're going to go back to black, I think. And in the top, what I'm going to have is A plus A. That's going to give me 2A. Minus 1 plus 1, that's going to give me 0. So all I have is 2A on the top. 
and the denominator here is a plus one, a minus one. Then in the bottom here, I don't want to make any mistakes, so I'm going to distribute this negative sign in. I have a minus one, minus a minus one, minus a minus one. Over here, I will have a plus one, a minus one. Now what I'm going to do is flip it over and multiply. So I'll have the 2a over a plus 1, a minus 1. Change this division to multiplication. Flip it over so this comes on the top. So it'll be a plus 1, a minus 1. And the denominator is this. But here I can add this. a minus a is 0. So the a's go away. Negative 1 minus 1 gives you negative 2. So here you're just going to have a negative 2. Let me sync myself up and just make sure that I haven't made any, any uh, big problems myself. So what I'm going to have then is uh, nice cancellations. The a plus 1 completely cancels with this. Notice it's complete term. This cancels with this as a complete term. And then the 2 and the 2 down here is going to cancel. I still have that minus sign, so I'm not striking through that. So really all I have at the end of the day is going to be a on top, a times 1 really, and then I have 1 times the negative 1, so you have a negative 1. A times, or divided by negative 1 is negative a. So all of that work just to get down to the answer, which is very simple, negative a. But notice that even though it was difficult, the same process applied. Find a common denominator, find a common denominator. Okay, get the numerators correct, then do the subtraction, which we had to do, keep the common denominators, then we had to flip, multiply, cancel. I told you exactly that in the beginning of the lesson. It was all going to be the same song and dance, just with more tedium, so to speak. All right, next problem. What if we have 1 plus 1 over x minus 1? On the bottom, we have 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 1. Looks very similar. So by now you should know you can't start canceling things. If you have linked terms with pluses and minuses and all that, but you do see I can try to add those fractions. I can try to add those fractions. So how do I do it? Well. This one's easier because I have ones here. I can have lots of flexibility with the number one. Anything over itself is one. So since this denominator is x minus one, I'll write this as x minus one over x minus one, because that, after all, is one, plus one over x minus one. In the bottom, I'll do the exact same thing, but this denominator is x squared minus one over x squared minus one, because that, after all, is one, plus one over x squared minus one. So it looks ugly, but it's actually not that bad because now I have a common denominator. I'm going to add this. So it's going to be this numerator plus 1. So it'll be x minus 1 plus the 1. The common denominator was x minus 1. That's what's on the top. On the bottom, it'll be this plus 1, which is x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 1. So you notice how I'm not doing the addition. I know that minus 1 plus 1 is 0 here in both cases, but I'm not doing it right now. I don't want to do too many things at once because I've done these a long time, and I know that if I try to shortcut too many things, I will mess it up. So I'm writing it down, and in the next step, I will say negative 1, positive 1 is 0. So it's just going to give me x on the top, x minus 1 on the bottom. Negative 1, positive 1, 0. So it's going to be x squared over x squared minus 1. Then I can change this fraction division um, to multiplication. So what will be is x over x minus 1. Change this division to multiplication. Flip the bottom fraction over. x squared minus 1 over x squared. And immediately I start looking for things to cancel. I see right away I have a single x, which can cancel one and only one of those. I leave one behind. You're tempted to try to cancel these, but you can't because they're not the same, right? So we multiply the tops. 1 times this is going to give me on the top, we're going to have x squared minus 1. On the bottom, I have an x here times this. So it would be x times x minus 1. Now you're tempted to circle it, but then I'm trying to tell you over and over again, always look for anything that can be factored. This is the difference of two squares. x squared minus 1 can be x squared minus 1 squared. So I can write that as x plus 1 x minus 1. Those multiply together to give me this. On the bottom I have x times x minus 1. Now look at there. In the top and the bottom I have something else that can now cancel that was only revealed after the factoring was complete. So on the top all I have left is x plus 1. 
over the bottom, which is just x. x plus 1 over x. There's nothing else to factor. There's nothing else to simplify. That's as far as I can go. Anytime you have square terms anywhere, just try to factor it. In this case, we could. So you see what I mean? This problem, if I gave it to you in the first batch, would be super, super hard and very confusing. We build up our skills. Now it is difficult looking, but actually this process went pretty fast. It's because you already kind of know what to expect. We're going to find common denominators. We're going to add things. And we're going to change the multiplication or the division to multiplication. Then we're going to cross simplify. Then we're going to factor and simplify again. And I know I'm going a little faster, but we've done quite a few problems up to now. So I think I can do that. Only two more problems. This one looks like a monster at first, but we're going to get through it. What we have is a over b minus a minus b over a plus b. All of that is in the numerator. The bottom is a over b plus a plus b over a minus b. Again, looks like a nightmare, right? But we just basically pretend the bottom isn't there. How do we get those fractions to be simplified? We have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to choose as my common denominator this times this, which means that when I'm going to have, I'm going to write a over b. I'm going to leave some room. I'm going to have a minus b over a plus b. So what I'm going to do is I'll multiply this fraction by the other denominator, which is a plus b over, I wish I would have left a little more room, sorry, a plus b. Let me get rid of this minus sign here and kick it out just a little bit so we don't get in the way of each other. And then this one, I'm going to multiply this fraction times b over b. Notice I'm multiplying this thing by 1. I'm multiplying this thing by 1. But this times this will give me b times a plus b. This times this will give me b times a plus b. So I have the same common denominator. But I'm not going to start doing any of that yet. I'll save it for the next step. Down here, I have the same kind of thing. A over B, leave me some room, plus A plus B over A minus B. Same exact thing. I'm going to choose as my common denominator to be the multiplication of those two, which means I need A minus B here, A minus B here. And then over here, I will need B over B. Again, I'm multiplying by 1 in all cases, but now the common denominator is B times this and B times the exact same thing. So I have common denominators everywhere, which is great. So here's where we have to be careful, right? We want to subtract these fractions. What you have in the numerator of this fraction is the multiplication of this minus this fraction, but this fraction is the multiplication of this. So when we do all of the subtraction of the fraction, it's going to be this numerator minus this numerator. So you're going to have a times a plus b minus b times a minus b, all divided by the common denominator, which is b times a plus b. Make sure you understand what happened there. It's this numerator minus this numerator, but you have to have things multiplied. The denominator is there. Then we will have a long fraction bar, and it'll be exact same process here. a times a minus b plus this numerator, b times a plus b, over the common denominator, which is b a minus b. See what I mean? There's so many a's and b's and minuses, it's very easy to just kind of get lost in it. Uh, here. All right. So then what we have to do, you might say, well, I'm kind of confused. What do I do next? Well, you have a lot of things multiplied here and you have a subtraction. And you have a lot of things multiplied here. We need to multiply all this out and then multiply all this out and then collect any common terms there. So in the numerator, it's just going to be a times this is a squared. So let's do a squared plus a times b, right? minus b times a, let's write it as a times b, because I'm going to end up canceling it with this. So it's b times a, we'll write it as a, b. Negative b times this, then negative b times negative b, it's positive b squared. You see what's going to happen? These are going to cancel, so you're going to simplify. In the bottom, it is true that I could distribute this in, but I don't want to because I'm going to end up trying to cancel it later. In fact, if, if I'm not sure, I just leave it alone, I can do it later, right? So for now, let's just leave it as b times a plus b. If I need to multiply that in later, I can do it. In the bottom, I have a squared minus ab, a squared minus ab. Then I have plus ba, which you can write as ab. Um, then you have b times b as b squared, so plus b squared. Notice again, I have a cancellation here. That's going to be nice. In the denominator, I'm not going to multiply it in for now. I might do it later. b, 
A minus B. All right, so finally we get to some exciting part. The AB can cancel with the negative AB, give me zero. The AB can cancel with the negative AB, give me zero there. So at the end of it, well, I shouldn't say it's the end of it, but basically this intermediate step here. In the top, you're gonna to have A squared plus B squared. A squared plus B squared over B times A plus B. That's the top fraction. The bottom fraction is A squared plus B squared. A squared plus B squared. The bottom fraction is, or the bottom denominator, B, A minus B. Now you start to get excited because you see the a squared plus b squared is common, but we're going to take it step by step to make sure that we don't make any mistakes. This is going to change to fraction uh, multiplication. So what you have is a squared plus b squared over this b a plus b. Change this to multiplication, flip this over. You're going to have b a minus b. On the bottom, you'll have this on the bottom, so you have a squared plus b squared. And again, you can always envision numerators of fractions have an invisible set of parentheses around them, so to speak. If that helps you, maybe it doesn't. So this entire term matches exactly this one. And as a bonus, the b is out in front and it's factored out already, so I can cancel that with that. So all I have left is implied one times a minus b. So I have a minus b on the top. And I have an implied one here times this a plus b. Now look at that, A minus B over A plus B, that's the final answer. I know it looks crazy, and it is crazy, but the process was the same. It's just more cumbersome because we had to get these common denominators, and then once we finally subtracted the fractions, we still had to distribute this stuff in, cancel terms, simplify, and then we saw the giant cancellation that happened here at the end, but you cannot see these cancellations until you blow the terms out uh, and then continue to simplify toward the final answer. Now, this last problem we're going to do, I almost didn't even do it because it's just such a crazy looking problem. You know, I'm like, ah, who, what, do we really want to do every kind of problem? But really I find part of my job to sort of show you the easy problems, the medium problems, the hard problems, and what we might call a challenge problem. So why don't we do one challenge problem just so I can show you how you would handle it. And I don't think it's going to be too hard for you. We've conquered all of these little parts in all of the different kinds of problems we've done. But this one still is a little challenging. Let's take a look. We have one minus. Now check this out. We have 2 minus 1 over x, but we have this divided by x. So 1 is minus a fraction, but in the numerator is 2 minus a fraction, and the bottom is this. It's kind of crazy. But then that whole thing is divided by something else. 1 minus 1 over x. So you see, we haven't done one quite like this, but how do you handle it? Right? It's just like you know the rules of order of operations. You go to the innermost parentheses. If you have multiple parentheses nested, you go to the most innermost and go out from there. So here, we're going to not only ignore the bottom, not only ignore this, but we're gonna ignore that too. We're gonna to start by just simplifying that top thing. Once we get that done, we'll incorporate that bottom thing. Once we get that done, we'll fold in that one minus. Once we get that done, we'll do the bottom, and we'll just kind of continue on like this. So requires a lot of writing, but it's not difficult to do. 1 minus. In the top, what do we have? 2, um, well, let's leave, let's write it as 2 over 1, right? And then we'll subtract 1 over x. And then this whole thing's divided by x. And then the bottom here, we have, um, let's go ahead and work in parallel, really. Let's get a common denominator here. The 1 can be x over x minus 1 over x. Now we didn't do the common denominator just yet in the top. We want one to be able to subtract this fraction. So we're just gonna multiply by x by x because then I'll have a common denominator here. So what do I have? The one minus sits out in front. We're not touching it. We're not touching anything on the bottom, right? But this will be two x minus one. So it'll be two x minus one for the numerator. The denominator is just x. It comes along for the ride. And that whole thing is divided by x. Notice we've done the fraction subtraction, but this denominator of x stays there. This one comes from this denominator. So it's over x and then over x kind of again. On the bottom here, x minus 1 over x, common denominator that we got. All right? So here, again, ignore this, ignore this. We have a fraction divided by a fraction. Of course, it's just x, but we can think of it as x over 1. So we say, 1 minus 
this guy will change to multiplication. 2x minus 1 over x. Change this to multiplication. And then this x is really x over 1. So when you flip it over, it becomes, uh, it's x over 1, it becomes 1 over x. All right, let me just double check myself. Yeah, 1 over x. And then in the bottom, nothing we can do here. We're just going to leave it x minus 1 over x. So here we're at the point where we can multiply these fractions. We really can't cross cancel anything, so we're just gonna multiply it. One minus two x minus one times one gives me two x minus one. The bottom is x times x gives you x squared. Now things are starting to look simpler. X minus one over x. Now I know this is still ugly, but it's not that bad. Now we have one minus this. We have to get a common denominator here. So the common denominator I'm gonna shoot for, I'm gonna switch colors here is x squared. So I'm going to write this 1 as x squared over x squared minus 2x minus 1 over x squared. On the bottom, I'll leave this exactly where it is, x minus 1 over x. Okay? So then in the next step, common denominator, we have it, so it's this minus this. So be careful because when you subtract it, it's minus the whole quantity. So you say x squared minus quantity 2x minus one, you need to wrap that in parentheses to avoid any problems with signs. You have an x squared. Then down here you have an x minus one over x. Now let's take a time and distribute the negative sign in. Let's switch back to black. So what we will have is x squared minus two x plus one. It's minus two x plus one, right? And then here we have x squared. And then on the bottom of this guy, we have x minus 1 over x. Now at this point, I think we can flip and multiply again because we have a large fraction divided by fraction. So it will be x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x squared. Change this division to multiplication, but we take the bottom fraction, flip it over. x over x minus 1. Okay. Now we don't see anything obvious we can cancel here, but we do have a single x which can cancel with that single x, right? And then what we're going to do, what we could do is just, we could say we're done, right? We'd say this times 1 is the numerator, this times this is the denominator. But I've been telling you, always try to factor things. And this looks like something ripe for factoring. So what do we have? It's going to be this times 1, so the numerator is basically going to be we're going to try to factor it. We have an x squared, so we have an x and an x. We have a 1, which means 1 and a 1. And it's got to be a negative inside, so we have to have minus and minus. Double check yourself. x times x is x squared. Inside term is minus x. Outside term is minus x, which adds to minus 2x. Last terms multiply to give me positive 1. On the bottom, I've got these multiplied, which is x multiplied by x minus 1. And you can see that the x minus 1 cancels this x minus 1. So now we finally get it down, and I just have barely enough room. It's going to be x minus 1 on the top, only a single x on the bottom. Double check. X, mi x over, let's see here. Double check. Get my last page here. x minus 1 over x. That's the final answer. Always get a little nervous when we <laughs> kind of do, do things without checking as I go, because I make mistakes too. So, as I said, if you can do this problem, you can do any problem right? Because this was just gnarly, right? But notice that it was incorporating all of the same skills, just lots and lots of nested versions of them. You know how to find a common denominator between those fractions. We did them many, many times. So you have to do that over here, right? And then you get down to where that's done, right? Then you have fraction division. We've done that before. You have to change to multiplication and flip. Okay, we do this, we get down to this. But then you have another set of fractions to simplify. We've done that before too, you go through this, right, uh, with the minus, distributing it all in and getting it. Now you have a fraction divided by a fraction. We've done that many times. Change to multiply and flip. And then you have a cancellation. And then we all know at the end to try to factor. So it's the final answer is this times the 1, x times this. But this we wrote as a factored form. We had a cancellation. So that's it. And that is pretty much a bonus problem. It's the hardest problem you'll see in complex fractions. I just wanted you to see one so that you know that no matter how hard you, they look, you ignore 90% of what you see and you focus in on the most deepest kind of fraction to simplify first and then expand your gaze from there. 
So make sure you understand this, solve every one of these problems. I encourage you to solve this one yourself, even though it's probably harder than you'll see on, on, on an exam, but who knows, you know, because it's good for your skills. Solve it, follow me on to the next lesson, and then we will learn how to apply what we know about simplifying these complex fractions to solving equations that contain these complex fractions. So we're going to use the skills here to solve complex equations in the following sections. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.